Chapter 15 In which the Battle of Castle Bratwurst begins. A battered Randolph, who manages to evade the reanimated suits of armor, was at the throne room with Baron von Bratwurst. He told him everything that has happened today, including Princess Kitty ruining the final solution with help from Grandpa Jack, and that made the Baron burst with rage. Baron von Bratwurst slams his thick fist on the throne and screamed, How could this have happened to my country? I've been humiliated! Randolph was sweating. Your guess is as good as mine, my Baron. As your advisor, if you think I'm hiding secrets from you, I've been anticipating for the final solution to succeed. We should have cured the children of a pork by now, but nine! That cat princess you've mentioned have to ruin everything with help from an elderly escapee from my workhouse. If you know what is best, we may start over, Randolph insisted. Delay it! What good will delaying the final solution do? Baron von Broadworth demanded. I know you're extremely angry, but what will we do? Randolph was desperate. What? What? Just then, one guard came into the room and bowed. My Baron, we got another problem, he said. What is it now? Baron von Bratwurst demanded. Just receive word that the refuge has been destroyed, the guard screamed. Every guard who's in there, including the master of the matron who runs it, all dead. The elderly is nowhere to be seen. I want them found and recaptured, ordered Baron von Bratwurst. I want to see some order on my country. Am I clear? You're all my baron, cried the guard and saluted. Heil Bomveria! As the guard left, Randolph sneered. Something tells me that cat princess has something to do with the destruction of your workhouse. I'll tell you what we'll do, my advisor. Baron von Bratwurst said. Firstly, we'll declare war on that scoundrel cat princess. And if she decides to barge into my castle again, she'll figure out that she just made the biggest mistake of her life. Prepare your troops for attack in case that giant cat monster decides to break in. But see to it that the princess's head will be mounted on my wall as a trophy, and the monster skinned into a rug and his corpse fed to the wolves. Then we'll deal with the pigs. Yavul, Randolph saluted. Heil Bomveria! And then he was off. But my readers, even Baron von Bratwurst has no idea who he's dealing with. We shall see. Outside the upper courtyard, Randolph orders the remaining soldiers. Orders from the Baron men! We shall give no quarter! To battle! Yavul! Came the cry of the soldiers and prepare their rifles, cannons, howitzers, and tanks for battle. Randolph heads down to the lower courtyard, and the gatekeeper calls out to him, Herr Randolph! Giant cat monster! Three minutes on closing! Keep the gate shut and secured! Randolph ordered. I don't want that furball coming in yet! The cat bus barge through the village at hot pursuit. Anyone who is foolish to be wandering out these streets are forced to get out of his way or face fate. Inside, old Grandpa Jack staggered to stay in his feet with Princess Kitty holding him. The pigs are secured in a pouch on the bed. Grandpa Jack shouted, This may look fun, but I'm going to be sick. Health is not valued till sickness comes. Please don't be sick, put the conductress. Try and stop me, Miss Cat. Then you better put this in your mouth and suck on it, put the conductress, holding out a green gobstopper. This green one will make you feel right as rain. He puts the gobstopper in his mouth. The engineer calls out, Queso Bratwurst! Dead ahead, boss! Perfect, purred the conductress. Ramming speed up the ramp on the closed gate while we prepare for war. The engineer bells at the cat bus. You are the ramming speed! Reduce the gate to splinters! He mutters to himself, said the elusive cat lady. With a roar, the cat bus storms up the semicircular entrance ramp 
and bashed his head at the gate, the castle echoing and shaking with his fury. He slammed his head again and again, shaking the timbers, the structure in the gatehouse quivering. Hope he doesn't get a head injury, Grandpa Jack said. No, he won't, purred the conductress. Look! The gate rocked with the bus's assault, wood cracking, the splintering noise like gunshots. At the other side of the gate, Randolph and his men were at the edge of the upper courtyard. Cannons were aimed at the weakened gate. Herr Randolph! The gatekeeper cried out. The gate's not going to hold any longer! It cannot take any more hitch! Never mind that! Randolph shouted. We're prepared! Get out of there! There came another blow, and then another. On the next at last, the door became brittle enough for the cat bus to explode through the lower courtyard with savage power. Seeing the soldiers with their rifles aimed at him, he lets out a deafening roar. Fire! Randolph ordered the soldiers holding their rifles. Rifles fire once more at the cat bus, which again did no effect. The conductress rolls her eyes, muttering, Bomvarian soldiers and their little toys. One of the soldiers called to Randolph, The bullets have no effect on it. It's too big and strong for rifles. Even our bayonets aren't enough. Then use the cannons! Randolph barked. Fire, you dumb cops! The soldiers fire their cannons at the cat bus, but the cannonballs sink into the bus's skin. Fire, zoom, Teufel! Randolph was shocked. The cat bus roars and turns around before he shoots out the enemy's cannonballs from behind, taking out several cannons and soldiers. Another wave hammers the upper courtyard and the walls of the castle. The soldiers began to retreat. Impossible! Randolph shouted. As soon as the cat bus turns around, Randolph hurls a stick grenade at the creature, which eats it and spits it back towards him. He got out of the way just as the grenade explodes. It can't be impervious to our arsenal! Randolph was now sweating. The cat bus cracks his neck and leaps onto the upper courtyard. Reinforcements had arrived with tanks trying to take down the cat bus. Make aim at your monster men! One of the soldiers barked. Fire! One tank blasts the cat bus in the face, roaring in pain. Inside, Princess Kitty, Grandpa Jack, and the engineer were thrown back. The pigs scream in fright. However, the conductors and her cats remain standing. All right, she stated. If that's how they want to play, then we'll play the Prometheus way. She and her cats head out of the cat bus through the back window and onto the lower courtyard. Grandpa Jack gets up to his feet. Kitty, I swear, that cat lady is going to get us all killed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, the engineer snapped. Maybe you should get out then. Surely they'll save their trouble, not want it. And take your pigs with you. Take cover, Jack, Princess Kitty screamed as the cat bus is being fired again, causing it to roar furiously. Just as the soldiers begin to attack again, the ground began to shake underneath their feet. They look up and their blood drained from their bodies in shock. That's because something huge, other than the cat bus, is climbing up the courtyard. The passengers can't help but look out and gasp. Standing at about 20 meters high now, the conductress looked down at the frightened soldiers, her hands on her hips and grinning. Scared, darling? She asked her voice resounding like a bass drum from her size. Aw, oh, so sorry to hear that. Because I'm just getting warmed up! Get those howitzers over here! Randolph barked. Shoot her! She must be stopped at once! A legion of howitzers approach and fire up at the conductress. As big as she was, the shells did nothing more than tickle her. She looked at the slaughterhouse next to her. Say, isn't that building used to kill pigs? She asked. Well then, I guess I wouldn't mind if I'd play with it a little, just like I played with that stupid workhouse. 
As soon as she approaches the slaughterhouse, Randolph's eyes widen as she completely obliterates the building with her massive size in less than 23 seconds flat. This was the final straw, not for Randolph, but for Baron von Bratwurst, who watches this from the third floor. The final solution has been completely destroyed. The conductress, grinning maliciously, decides to advance at the enemy, stepping on howitzers, a few tanks, and several Bomvarian soldiers with their boots. Then she stopped when she felt tiny bullets battering her back. She turns and stares ahead and finds Baron von Bratwurst shooting at her in a rage with his MG-08. But like the howitzer shells, bullets didn't do much except irritate her. This little piggy messed with the wrong cat! She shouted, but the Baron kept firing. There, Haruka and Minako ran up to the courtyard, and onto the last of the operating tanks, they enter through the peephole and attack whoever's inside. Inside, there were screams of pain from the soldiers. Hearing the screams from inside, the conductors picked up the tank with both hands. Peering inside to find her cat's hijacking, she decides to turn the tank towards the Baron, who is still shooting at her. When he saw the tank's front gun pointing at him, he stopped shooting and ducked, just as the hijacked tank fired. The shell took out a chandelier, shattering to pieces. The next shell blew a table to bits. Haruka and Minako fired again and again and again, taking down columns and blowing holes on the walls. Eventually, they ran out of ammo. The conductress can hear the cats whining and asked, Ran out of ammo already? She can see the Baron scream and continue firing at her. She smirked, saying, Don't cry, my pets. This tank will do. Immediately, the cats got out of the tank and climbed down their owner's massive body. Then she hurls the tank at the Baron. However, he got out of the room just as the tank smashes through the window and explodes, leaving a giant hole on the facade. More reinforcements came, trying to take down the giant conductors, but Haruka and Minako climbed down her boots and charged at the soldiers. In no time, they are taking down several, scratching them, biting them, tearing them with their claws. The soldiers try to fight back, but they are no match for them. The cries of pain were deafened by the roar of the cat bus. The conductress looked down at more soldiers, shouting, So you've all decided to come play with me! Snarling, she stomps on them, crushing their bones and killing them in the process, her boots cracking the ground. The bus's rage intensifies as he helps his owner by swatting the soldiers with his paw, sending them flying into the air. Eventually, it's too much for the reinforcements to bear, and they retreat. Seeing the enemy retreating, the conductress quickly shrunk down to normal and makes her way toward the cat bus. However, she can hear Randolph scream as she saw him running towards her with a detached bayonet on his left hand. She grabbed his left hand, causing him to stab her on the right side of her chest. But what he didn't notice until it was too late is that she already aimed her Tanegashima pistol closer to his hand. There was an explosion, and Randolph howled in pain as his left hand was blown to smithereens. He staggers and falls to the ground, now clutching at his handless arm, sighing in annoyance to find the bayonet stuck to the right side of her chest. She pulls it off and hurls it towards an injured soldier who got to his feet. The blade went to his heart. There was a gurgling groan, and the soldier fell to the ground, dead. Sorry. Only one stab in the heart per customer, she said, grabbing the wounded Randolph by the hand and hurling him to the ground in front of the cat bus. He watches the cat bus's stomach contract violently. Before he knew it, the cat bus vomits molten molasses all over him. The wicked man screams like mad. Grandpa Jack looks down, disgusted. Mish Cat, I think your cat bus really needs to see a vet, he said. Princess Kitty got out of the cat bus as he calls out, Where are you going? I must face the Baron, she said in triumph. It's me he wants to deal with now. Mike's perfect saints, the engineer said. 
After all, you're supposed to be the main character in the story. She can tell that the battle is far from over, for there is one more threat left. In the throne room, Baron von Bratwurst screamed in fury at his defeat, flipping his desk over and throwing couch cushions onto the floor like a little boy throwing a violent tantrum. But that was the least of his problems, my readers. Princess Kitty is coming up to the third floor. He bellows to himself. My final solution has been ruined! Because these incompetent twigs let themselves be defeated by a bunch of stupid cats! And my soldiers call themselves worthy? Ha! I've seen more competent wolves that are better than these horrible excuses for soldiers! I'll take their metals and their bayonets and shut them straight up their disease! The door bursts open, and in came Princess Kitty, armed with her scepter. You wish to see me? She said. It's me you want, isn't it? Well, here I am. In a rage, he unsheathed his saber. My name is Princess Kitty, she went on. For your barbaric scheme of massacring the children of your country, I shall punish you in the name of my kingdom. Not today, you little pink and brat, he sneered. Unless you want to pull any tricks on me. A trick? Well, how's this for a trick? She raised her scepter, screaming, Watashiwa! I no can! Oshokan! The scepter transforms into a sword with a pink blade and a red handle decorated with a pink heart in the middle and white wings at the sides. The sword of love. You see? You are no match for me! She smirked. We'll see about that, Fraulein. He sneered. In an instant, they began crossing swords. She made wide swings at her opponent, slashing apart or creating sparks wherever the blade touched while he ducks and backed off. At one point, he lost his sword, and quickly sped around to retrieve it while she came at him. He managed to get back his weapon and cackles while throwing one of the couch cushions at her. The heart of the Sword of Love begins pulsating, slow at first, then faster and faster, causing the blade to glow white. Sensing this, she charged at him, but he dodges, and she ends up slicing the couch in half with ease. Looks like it would be easier if you surrender now, she said. It is my intention to make sure that no one dares to stand in my way. Never, he screamed, picking up a chair with ease and swung it to her body, causing the chair to break into pieces and knocking her to the floor. I will make you pay for what you've done to my country, he ranted angrily, eyes fierce and teeth bared. You just had to make it worse for yourself, you and your freaks, by ruining everything. Once she got up to her feet, she cracked her neck and sneered, So be it. The two continued crossing swords with each other. Audacity upon audacity upon audacity, she thought. The heart of the Sword of Love begins beating again, and the blade glows white. With a huge yell, she managed to slice the Baron's blade in two. Desperate, he throws the hilt towards his opponent. At the same instant, she grabbed the hilt in midair and threw it aside. Then she grabbed him by the collar. Go on, you fool, he said. Strike me down! I am unarmed by your weapon! Killing me won't bring your friends back! It never will! Vandalf shall be my successor by default! No, she said. She hurls him across the room. He staggers to his feet and reaches a suit of armor carrying a mace. She hurls the sword of love at the armor, impaling it. That's nothing compared to what I'm going to do to you, for I'm no ordinary cat, she said. What are you going to do about it? He picks up the mace and rushes forward. He swings it at her head. The mace shatters on impact with a deafening crack. He falls backwards, staring in disbelief at his opponent, unharmed. She pulls out her bell. How pitiful of you to try to take me down, she said. Too bad the fight is already over. If you want me to be your enemy, you already got your wish. But in the end, you will kneel before me. And I will make sure 
I'll never surrender to a freak like you! He snapped. Never! Then I will make you! Then she rings her bell. There was a deafening roar, and the cat bus burst through the door as if it were styrofoam. Baron von Bratwurst turned around just in time to see the creature take a flying leap towards him and landed on his body. The enormous weight of the cat bus pinned the rotten Baron's body to the ground, except his chest, his arms, and his head. What are they for the Gluck? He screamed. Get this beast off of me! Serves you right, you foul man! She said. It's about time you get a taste of your own sweets! He struggled furiously, but the cat bus held him tight, and he couldn't move. You can't do this to me! You're not a little pussy! He screamed. What a shame! She said. You should have surrendered sooner! Remember the old proverb saying, Gluttony always succumbed to ruin! I got a cursed dessert, an apple fritter in my hand, in which this and all kinds of sweets cause the children to transform into pigs for you to eat. He wriggled and screamed like a beached fish, but it was no use. The body of the cat bus held him tightly, and he couldn't escape. Nine! Please don't put it in my mouth! Nine! He shrieked, but it was too late. She popped the apple fritter into his mouth. It took nearly 30 seconds for it to go into his stomach. He stopped struggling and begins to smile and chuckle madly. I want more sweets. If you want sweets, you'll just have to go to the kitchen, she said, and the cat bus released him. Oh, walk away. And remember the other proverb. Whoever gains a greedy heart usually dies before his hair turns pink. Baron von Bratwurst laughs and rushes out of the throne room and into the kitchen, just as Grandpa Jack exits the cat bus. I have spared the Baron's life, Princess Kitty said. And while he lives, now he'll be degrading himself by his own sweets. His degradation shall be enough to send a clear message that nobody will ever oppose the cat go princess of Kawaii Wonderland. Quite a fitting penalty for almost murdering my grandchildren, Grandpa Jack said. Let his death be handled by the other men for pork. Let's not forget, Jack. There's still the other children we have to rescue. I haven't. But where would they go besides the slaughterhouse? Nowhere to go but an orphanage at your city. Perhaps it would treat the children nicely instead of cruel like the master or the matron from the refuge. How nice of the princess Kitty to go with that suggestion, purred the conductress. But how will we turn my grandchildren back to normal? Grandpa Jack asked. Why don't we wait until we leave Bomveria? How you always flatter me every time you speak. Later, the cat bus burst through the dining hall door, startling the pigs. When the suits of armor saw Princess Kitty coming, they kneel. You are all relieved, she declared. The suits of armor instantly dropped to the floor lifeless. All right, pigs, the engineer groaned. All aboard the mighty cat bus. Already the pigs went on board the cat bus with Princess Kitty and Grandpa Jack helping them. And do mind your hooves, purred the conductress. Once you're back to your normal selves, you'll all be relocated to an orphanage. But believe me, this will be a long 1,783 miles. Around the world and home again, that's the sailor's way. Needs you more proof of where the hollow ship sails? Bomveria is overthrown, and good prevails! With all the pigs on board the crabbed cat bus, the conductor's orders, Take us out! The engineer bells at the cat bus. You heard her! Destination home! Hop to it! The destination sign on the cat bus read, Kadono. The cat bus roars and he's off, bursting through the balcony and landing on the courtyard. He leaped over the castle wall and was gone from sight into the woods. A defeated Randolph, covered in molasses, made his way inside the castle. The bleeding of his stump had already stopped, due to him being all covered. 
When he heard a crash of plates from the main kitchen, he decides to investigate. When he bursts into the kitchen, he suddenly opened his mouth and screamed. The entire kitchen was literally a pigsty, my readers, but that's beside the point. Baron von Bratwurst was the one you wanted to know about. His body became obese, belly full of sweets after mindlessly eating them. His uniform stained against his growing body. He now has floppy ears and a huge snout. Randolph grabbed a pot of water with one hand and hurls it to his face. Baron von Bratwurst sputters and barks, Mine advisor, what are you doing in the kitchen? Why are you covered in molasses? What am I doing here? Baron von Bratwurst looked down on himself and went pale. Horrified, he staggers to his feet and exclaims in horror. What's happening to me? Randolph hands him a tray. The Baron gasped at his own reflection. He has been ironically turned into a pig. She did this. The girl. Randolph spat, spitting out bits of molasses from his mouth. But she hasn't seen the last of us, mind Baron. We will make sure of it that she will pay. Baron von Bratwurst roared. Ich bin ein Schwein! He screamed both in horror and in rage, throwing the tray away, stomping and throwing dishes and pans in a fit, while Randolph slumps onto a chair. It's that cat! Baron von Bratwurst screamed. She has done this to me, does she? Wait until I get my hands on that cat! She hasn't seen the last of me! I will have my revenge soon enough! But don't despair, my readers. That's the last we ever see Baron von Bratwurst, his advisor, and the rest of Monveria all together in this story. Until next time, at least.